Hi, third graders. Alrighty, today is lesson 6.6 .6 in our math books, and this is what we're going to be able to do at the end of the lesson. Let's read it. If we had a teacher's helper, I would have them read it, but we're at home, so we don't. All right, here we go. I can recognize and solve word problems with extra, hidden, or not enough information. Have you guys ever seen a word problem like that? It has extra information that you're like, why did they even tell me that? Or there's not enough information and you just have no idea how to solve the problem. Yeah, tricky. So we're going to talk about that today. Here is our first problem. This one we're going to be thinking about extra information. So while you're looking at this, while we read it and do it together, think about what in here is extra and what is not needed at all. Okay, here we go. Emma solved nine math problems and answered seven reading questions. Her sister solved eight math problems. How many math problems did they solve in all? Okay, take a second. What part of this problem is unnecessary? It has nothing to do with our answer. It's just extra information that we don't need. I'm going to cross it out and let's see if you had the same idea as me, okay? That doesn't work. Here we go. Did you guys get the same thing? Yeah. Why is this unnecessary? Why is this extra? Think about that for a second. You can pause me. Okay. This is unnecessary because Emma, she solved nine math problems and then her sister solved eight problems. And we wanna know how many math problems they solved in all. Do we even wanna know anything about the reading questions? No. The last question, the question for our answer just says how many math problems did they solve in all? So we don't really need the reading. We don't need those at all, right? So, how can we represent this? I know that Mrs. Gifford did a really good job of showing you guys how we can represent problems. So let's see, how can we represent this? I'm gonna scoot my camera down a little bit so we can see the bottom. There we go, okay. One way I like to do it, Math Mountain, okay? Math Mountains are great. So in Math Mountain, we just draw our little mountain. And what goes on the top here? Our total right? Yes. So we do we know our total? We have nine math problems, eight math problems, and it's asking us how many did they solve in all? Remember, that's a clue word. If it says in all, that means total. So we don't know our total because of this little question mark here. I'm going to put a box at the top of my mount, math mountain. I don't know my total. What are my two add-ins? Emma's nine math problems, and her sister's eight. Yes, yes, yes. So let's put nine here and eight. Sorry guys, my handwriting isn't great on this one, but that's all right. And then all we'd have to do is, this shows me that I'm doing addition, nine plus eight, 17. I could also use a math sentence or an equation to solve this. In order to do that, I could go, 9 plus 8 equals, and in these I like to use variables. So for this one, I'm going to put m for total math problems. m. And again, we would know that m equals 17. Now, we also remember that with a math mountain, we can take this top number, our total, and subtract one of our add ins to get the other add-end, right? Did you follow that? It's a little tricky. Let's try that. So pretend that this is still m. How would we do a subtraction problem? Well, we would say m minus, choose whichever add-end you want, nine or eight. I'm gonna go with eight, equals our other add-end, nine. And we're still solving for m. Now remember, when we answer word problems, we label our answers. So M isn't just 17, M is math problems. 17 math problems. Yes, you got it. Alrighty, so remember, if there's extra information in a problem, don't get tricked. Just know, oh, I don't even need that information. Take it out, cross it out. Alrighty. All right, so that was extra information. Now let's talk about hidden information. Hidden information is those things that they say in a problem that don't give you quite enough to know exactly what the number is. 
So let's read this and I'll talk a little more about what I'm talking about. Okay. Samuel had 16 new horseshoes in the shed yesterday. Today, he put a new set of horseshoes on his horse, Betsy. How many horseshoes are left in the shed? First, this is about horses. Who do, who do we know in our class who loves horses? I'm thinking Maddie. Maddie, this is a great problem for you, right? Okay. So hidden information, that stuff that didn't give us the number. I only see one plain number in this whole problem. 16, that's the only one I see. But I have to figure out how many horseshoes are left in the shed. So there's some sort of subtraction going on here, but I don't know what other number to subtract, right? Let's think about it. What is the sentence that's confusing? What is the hard part of this problem? Where is my hidden information? Think about that and I'm gonna circle a sentence. See if you match. Okay, this is what I'm thinking is difficult. Because I know that this sentence is giving me the number I need to subtract, but it doesn't actually tell me straightforward, right? Let's think. How can I figure the number? How can I do it? Well, he put a new set of horseshoes on his horse, Betsy. Now let's not think about horses for a second. Let's just think about people. That's more familiar to us. So, here I am. Maybe I'll wear a dress. Okay, I need some shoes, right? I need a set of shoes. How many shoes am I gonna wear? If this didn't say horseshoes and it just said shoes, how many would I be wearing? Two, right? Yeah, so here, I'm wearing two shoes. Easy. Now let's think about a horse. Don't laugh at my drawings, here we go. Addie the other day told me she remembered my drawing of a dog. You remember that when I asked you to draw, or talk about my drawing? Yeah, it wasn't good. So let's let's see how I can draw a horse. Here we go. So I'm gonna here's the head. Um, here's the body. It's got a mane, so there's its hair. Okay, its legs. It's got a nice luscious tail of hair there. Oh, and should it have an eye and a mouth? Oh, and they have ears, so here. I think it's pretty good. Yeah? Okay. So if I was saying a new set of horseshoes for a horse, how many shoes is a horse gonna wear? Are, is that horse Betsy, is she gonna wear two shoes like I wear two shoes? Does she have two legs? No, she has four legs, so she's gonna wear four shoes. I'm gonna draw those. Horseshoes are shaped like this, so I'm gonna draw them like that. So now I have found my hidden number. If she is putting a new set of horseshoes on Betsy, that is four horseshoes, four horseshoes. So now I know my second number, I can now solve the problem. So she's got 16, she put four onto the horse. So is that addition or subtraction, what are we thinking? I'm thinking subtraction too. If I have 16 things and then I'm putting four of them on something else, I have less less over here now, right? You could do a math mountain, math equation. To make it faster, I'm just gonna do a quick math equation. Here we go. So I started with 16 horseshoes in the shed. I took away four of them to put on my horse, Betsy, right? Equals, I'm gonna do a variable, because I like variables, S for shoes. How many shoes are left? S equals, 16 minus 4, well, let's think. I can do 6 minus 4, which is 2. Add that 10 back in, 12. 12, and am I done? No, I didn't trick you, good job. 12 horseshoes. And that is hidden information. Information that's there, but not quite there, right? All right, good job. So that was extra hidden, that was hidden information, my bad, I forgot for a second there. That was hidden information, so we've learned about extra information, hidden information, the last thing on our I can statement was not enough information. 
So this problem here is one where we're like, I don't have enough information to solve it. So we're going to have to figure out what would I need in order to solve this problem. So let's read it. Here we go. Sarah brought eight bananas at the fruit. Oh, sorry. I meant to say bought, but I wrote brought. Sarah bought eight bananas at the fruit market. She put them in a bowl with some oranges. How many pieces of fruit are in the bowl? Okay, so what is it asking me for? What is, what's my answer going to be? How many pieces of fruit are in the bowl? How many total pieces of fruit are in the bowl? So that's what I have to figure out. I know how many bananas I have. I have eight bananas. And then it says I have some oranges. And so I have bananas and oranges in this bowl. But do I know how many oranges there are? I don't. And I don't think it's anything I could figure out. Like, it doesn't tell me any sort of clue. It just says some. So, what do I need to know in order to solve this problem? I need to know how many oranges there are. So I would just say, I need to know... I did not connect my D there, sorry. I need to know how many oranges there are. And that's all you have to say because, oh, sorry, there you go. And that's all you have to say because you can't tell me how many pieces of fruit are in the bowl because you don't know everything. So just say, I need to know how many oranges there are, sorry. And that's how you answer not enough information problems. Okay, so now you guys know how to solve problems and recognize problems with extra information, information that isn't necessary, hidden information, information that you kind of have to figure out, it's more of a clue, and not enough information. Can't answer it, sorry. Okay, classroom brought to you by Quinn, this is Quinn's room. Markers brought to you by Josie, thanks Josie. And I love you guys. I miss you. Remember, you are somebody. You were somebody when you came, and you'll be a better somebody when you leave every day. Okay, guys.